Hey, what's up everybody, AWOL here, and we're live on Twitter every single weekday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Today we're talking about why we recommend copying other creators. What? Andrew huh? Perrin, what are we talking about? Copying other people? <laughs> it's your original content. It's my original content. Perrin, what do you think about that? It's not quite what you think it's gonna be. So we're gonna talk about how you actually get started being a creator and how you utilize other creators to do that. And it's not blatant copying. We'll get into it here in a second. Yes, we will. And you know, when you're getting started and you're wondering, what should I do? How should I grow? How should I grow my account? What areas could I break into? A lot of the time, people just, of course, look at the top YouTubers. They look at PewDiePie, they look at the top gamers, they look at the top vloggers, they look at the top people in their space, and they think, I am going to do exactly what they're doing today and I'm going to be as successful as they are today. And to a certain extent, that is where you should start. You should take a look at their best practices with their thumbnails, as an example, and maybe take some of the things that they're doing there. You should take some look at some of their best practices in terms of their upload frequency and do some of the things that they're doing there. And you should take their best practices to heart and try to start implementing them yourself. However, if you think that by copying their best practices, you're going to suddenly reach their level of success. That's just simply not the case. Now, why wouldn't that be the case? If I just straight up rip off somebody's thumbnail strategy and upload strategy, why won't my channel grow as quickly as theirs did in the original days when they started their channel? What are the differences, Perrin? Well, you're not that person. You're somebody different. You're somebody totally different. You're a totally different human being. So, I mean, you have to make these strategies your own in a way, like it's okay to start, I mean, and to just get a start. I mean, this is why we're kind of talking about this in the first place. I did this, I, I used to be like always thinking this way in the beginning of trying to do creator stuff. And I see this a lot from new creators. It's like, I'm gonna come up with this idea that no one has done before. <laughs> and it's really important that that be the way that I start. So that I have like this unique draw to my channel that no one else has thought of, which can work, you know, but the, like the likelihood of you actually finding that unique thing is so low and the likelihood of that unique thing actually being the thing that grows you is even lower. So instead of trying to wrap your brain and do like the, all these mental gymnastics to drive, do something that hasn't been done before, don't reinvent the wheel. Otherwise you'll never get started. Just get started being a creator so you can start pumping out content by taking other strategies, other things that work for other creators that you like and apply them to your own channel with a transformation of over time, making that kind of strategy or idea or application your own in some way over time. So that you're kind of like remixing it, I guess, in a way so that it's your own flavor and people know that it's something unique to you. If they can tell that you're just blatantly copying a certain strategy from someone else, it's not going to last very long and people will see right through that. So it's very important that you find a way to like make it yours. And that doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel, make it super unique. It just means make it yours with your human ability. You're the difference, right? You're not the same as that other person, that other creator. So how is, are you as that individual human being going to be you and make it your own? Yeah. I'm going to provide a completely different perspective on the matter. I would tell you, you can completely copy everything someone else is doing and no one will care. Uh, so I'm gonna provide you with a different perspective on this. I think that um, on the internet, on YouTube, especially in large niches, if you do, let's say somebody has a uh, hunting series, let's say you're a hunting creator, random example, and you're both doing videos on uh, knives and you see a, uh, uh, a fellow creator that does a certain format with knives or they start out, they go to the store, they buy the knife, they do an, uh, they unpack the knife and they do the certain sequence of events with the knives and then they go hunting and then they do whatever hunters do with the knives at the end and you copy that entire format of their exact video format all the way through, that's great. Copy their format. Do exactly what they're doing as a starting point. Also copy their thumbnail format. Sounds great. Use that as a starting point. Then you can take a look at the data for your YouTube channel or on Twitter, on Facebook and what have you, and look at where people are dropping off in the video. 
Look at where your click-through rates are with your thumbnails. Start doing A-B testing with your thumbnails. Start tweaking your format from there based on the actual data, and then you can figure out how you can change that format over the time to make it yours. But if you're, like you're saying, trying to do what Andrew Perrin is talking about and coming up with some completely original idea, and you're trying to divine something from scratch, guess what? There are no completely original ideas left. Human beings have thought of literally every single thing that is ever going to be <laughs> thought of, with, with the exception of like a 0.00001% that you know geniuses are going to come up with or we're going to stumble upon on accident. So the art of copying other people, the art of copying other creators is how human beings learn. That's how we all learned everything we know right now, right? We copied what our parents did. We copied what our friends did. That's how we know how to even talk and do anything. And so the art of copying, making it something that you study and you focus on and you think about, I'm gonna copy a little bit here from this person. I'm gonna copy a little bit here from this person. I'm gonna copy a little bit here from this person. And I'm gonna combine all of these good ideas and I'm gonna to try to, and that's the part I think Perrin is talking about, make it your own. There's no such thing as it coming from you. You didn't come up with the idea of making videos. Somebody else came up with that before you. You didn't come up with the idea of doing review videos for knives in this example. Somebody else did that before you. But combining different pieces that you like from other people that's where the originality comes from. So I guess what I'm trying to say is copying other creators, copying other people is what origin is is what we call originality. It's just how you combine those ingredients in a unique way that makes you original. Does that make sense? So not only is it a great way to actually get started and to actually be pumping out content, but if you do this and you are copying good strategies, you will get ahead you actually start to break out from like the current level you're in above the similar similar level creators. And we've, we've done this. So I've got a pretty good example. Um, it's not, it's not specific in YouTube. I mean, this is an applicable skill across many different areas. So in social media, we did this with the TGN Twitter account. We were looking for new strategies. We were focused on building a really solid gaming presence on Twitter. And we had big competitors at the time. One of them being Machinima. Machinima had, at the time, a really, really great social presence. They were very well engaged. We got lots of uh, the great content coming out. So what we would do is uh, you, we would do a competitor analysis, which all that really is is looking at all of your competitors and figuring out what content for them is working and what isn't working. So what's their strengths and what's, what's their weakness? And then all you do is you copy their strengths. If you copy your competitors' <laughs> strengths, yep. then your competitors don't have anything better than you. And suddenly you take yourself from a level where you're down here, your competitors are up here, you bring yourself up to their level, right? So that's what I'm talking about whenever you, whenever you do this and you take creators that you like and you adopt their strategies, you're bringing yourself up to their level, which is where you wanna be because you're going to be getting audience engagement, views, more of their level. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna like rise to PewDiePie standards right away, but you're at least putting yourself into the same territory of doing the same type of content, which is great for your brand because people watching will think the same thing. They'll think, oh, this person is can do the same types of content strategies that this huge YouTuber that I know can do. Oh, they must be on the same level, right? It's a, you associate yourself with the best by copying the best. It's like tried and true, plain and simple competitor analysis strategy for branding 101. So not only is this good for creators, this is good for anybody who's trying to excel at social media. Um, this is any, good for anybody who's trying to help a business, you know, get a leg up and be competitive in uh, their line of business. It's just something that we've done in life so much that we get, and I think we get lost trying to be super creative all the time as creators, you know, it kind of makes sense. And we're trying to come up with something completely original. There's always that like draw for the original. Forget the original. You'll get to the original accidentally in some way. Forget trying to force yourself there. It's not going to happen. You'll never get started. You'll, you'll always be like trying to figure out how to do this, such this complicated thing to make it original because like you said, hey, well, everything's been done. So if something is going to be original, it's got to be so complex to get off the ground from the get-go. Just make it simpler on yourself. And so that makes it really easy if you're someone who wanted to be, who wants to be a creator and you have trouble even getting started, that's a great way to start. Find the creator you like the most, 
find the segment that you like the most and take that and just do it. That way you've got something to start with. Makes and then sense. Over, over time, you make it your own and you see how it works in the analytics and you go from there. Totally makes sense. And all the people that we regard out there, creators or otherwise, classical composers that we review, that we regard as like the most original or the most incredible, all they're doing is just copying all of the composers before them and then putting a little twist on it. Uh, the greatest filmmakers of our time, the geniuses, all they're doing is just copying all the films that they ever watched as a kid and as an adult and in film school and then just doing a tiny little twist on it or combining different ingredients or using new technologies. So it's all about taking basically 80% what you've already seen on the internet, what you've already seen on Twitter, what you've already seen on Twitch, what you've already seen on YouTube, and then taking 20%, well, what new things, what new twist can I put on it? So let's talk here in the last few minutes of the broadcast today on what those twists could be uh, because it's, you know, just straight up copying people obviously has a bad rap. So let's talk about what we mean to combine those ingredients in a unique way. So one way that works a lot, uh, that is an easy way to think about this is perhaps there's a creator on YouTube that is doing uh, a certain type of videos and you want to break into that space. Maybe they're doing Fortnite videos. I'll throw it out there you can take the strategy of doing funny Fortnite videos like they're doing on YouTube, and then you can take that to a new platform. That's a way to be original, in quotation marks. Now, you may be copying their idea, you may be copying their format for their content, but if you take that content over to another platform like TikTok, for example, where maybe nobody is doing that, you're gonna look original on TikTok. And we interviewed a, a creator on our podcast named Mr. Kasla, who did exactly that, he didn't invent the idea of funny Fortnite videos, but he started doing it over on TikTok, and then he's getting close to 100,000 followers now on TikTok, where he only has a couple thousand subscribers on YouTube where he was trying the same strategy. So moving to a new platform can be a way to be original. On, on TikTok now, now he's the funny Fortnite guy on TikTok. So if anybody else does funny Fortnite stuff on TikTok, they're gonna be like, yo, you're copying Mr. Kasla. But really, Mr. Castle was copying somebody else. It's a copy <laughs> fest, man. That's how everybody breaks out, man. They did something that somebody else did, but sometimes in a new place, a new platform can be your way to break out. Can you think of any other ways of like fundamental ways to take an existing idea and to make it new by doing something simple? Well, in your example, uh, if you're doing funny Fortnite videos, if you're doing them, uh, if you're doing them with like your human presence on on camera, it's really easy on YouTube because you, you are the difference. So instead of it being the person's humor that you copied, add your own humor. Understand, what first of all, what your own humor is like, what you're good at. Are you good at being like satirical, sarcastic, you know, uh, um, crass, whatever? What is your kind of humor take? And then add your, your take to it and make it your brand of humor that works for you. The things that you find funny, make, make those the things. Because if, if you find it funny and you genuinely can translate that across camera, other people will see that. If you're trying to use somebody else's brand of humor and yours doesn't match, that can, that can, I can see where that could get crossed up and won't work too well. So brand it, when I say like brand it yourself, I mean, put your own personality to it. That's going to be the greatest way to change anything that you copy because that's going to be the main difference maker in, in your content, especially for YouTubers, is that you're the difference. And your your per, your human entity, your the things that make up you, no one else has that. No one else has what you have, and no one else can copy that part, right? They can copy the strategies all they want, but they can't be you specifically. So that's where you make the change. That's where you make it yours. Awesome. And one power tip before we end the podcast today. It's going to be a short one because we got to go to work. <laughs> but power tip is take when you copy someone's idea and you wanna make it your own, rarely, almost never, is taking someone's idea and then saying, but I'm gonna do that with a higher production quality. And that's what's gonna make me break out. Because I'm watching this other guy's videos, somehow he's getting uh, 300,000 views per video, and I'm gonna have better mic, and I'm gonna have better graphics, I'm gonna have better camera, and I'm gonna have better editing, and then I'll be successful. Guess what? If something is already successful with a lower level of production quality, people aren't watching it for the production quality. 
Wow. So if you try to increase the production quality on top of that, you're adding a value the audience doesn't care about. So increasing production quality versus your competitors does not equal success. Got it? Good. Thank you so much for listening to the Digital Drop Podcast. It was a short one today, but Perrin's been asking to cover this. Let's give people permission to copy other people because we copy other people all the time and it's good. It's a good thing. It's, what do they say? You know, uh, mimicking is the highest form of flattery or whatever the hell that phrase Imitation is. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery or something like that, yeah. It's so true. So if somebody copies you, uh, just realize that you copied somebody, whether you realize it or not, it's okay. We're all sharing with each other. That's what's beautiful about an open internet like we have right now. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to catch the replays of these episodes, video version is going to be up on YouTube. Also audio version on every single podcasting platform there is on planet Earth. We copied other people's strategies in learning how to distribute through Libsyn. And that's what we're doing. And go create some content. Go find those best practices. And just think of one little twist. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Because guess what? I'm sorry, you aren't that smart. You just aren't. So recognize that and go be successful by standing on the shoulders of giants that came before you, and then you can jump off from there and go get your dream. Make sense? See you in the next one, guys, and have a fantastic day.